Um, I mean, today was practice 12, and uh, it was one of the few days where we say the defense beat us. So uh, you, you got to take the wins with the losses for sure. And uh, I called the offense up like three or four times today just to try and talk to uh, everyone to let them know that we have to stay positive. Uh, we have to push through adversity. Uh, we need, uh, quite honestly, we need more people to speak up on offense. Uh, we got, you know, me and Travis Vokalek and Turner Corcoran, but. Uh, we need we, we need more guys to speak up. Um, I think that the defense does a great job of having a lot of voices, um, a lot of leadership. So I would say just um, I told everybody today, just pick each other up and stay positive. Keep encouraging each other. You know, it doesn't matter if it's hot. It doesn't matter if it's the first or the fourth quarter. You know, we're going to be in a lot of different environments. And um, I told the team today we're going to play in Michigan. We're going to play in Dublin, Ireland. We're going to play in Lincoln, Nebraska. It doesn't matter where we're at. We have to stick together. And we have to push to adversity. Yeah, I would say this is, you know, you guys know I've only been here since January, but this is the best that we've looked as a team since I've been here um, the last few weeks of fall camp. And uh, offense, defense, and special teams, we have more depth. Um, we have a lot of guys making plays on both sides of the ball, whether that's in one-on-ones, whether that's in seven-on-seven or in team periods. It's gone both ways um, throughout the practices during training camp, and um, I, I'm really excited about where we're at. But um, I'm a perfectionist. I want to. I want us to take the next step as a team. Um, you know, we 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 have to get better as an offense, uh, as a team, and I have to get better as a quarterback. Ross, have you seen a difference in you since you had your procedure? Do you feel that? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times the body will overcompensate. Um, you know, I went from October 9th to April 9th, all the way through spring ball. I basically had a ligament that was, you know, um, injured, and I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of ongoing chronic, uh, I guess, issues in my thumb that I didn't know about. Um, and once we found out, uh, we, we got it fixed. And um, I, I basically went from October to April uh, throwing the football, um, not knowing that I had some damage in there. And um, we got it fixed. And I would say now I feel better than ever. Um, my grip is 100%. Um, you know, I'm able to throw the ball like I want to with the velocity that I want to. Um, have great mechanics, um, you know, I have more zip on the ball and I'm able to throw it around the field. So I would say I probably was making it work um, just by compensating from week six against Oklahoma in the second quarter. I threw a screen pass to B. John Robinson on the left hash on third down and uh, it was incomplete and uh, I basically probably tore and strained all the ligaments and muscles and everything in my hand. I, I didn't um, I didn't know uh, at that time what the severity of it was, but um, like I said, everything is fixed now, and uh, I'm healthy, and my thumb and my arm are stronger than it's ever been. Uh, I'm really excited about uh, the way the ball is coming off my hands, and uh, I think Coach Frost is right. You know, I have more confidence and more grip, so I'm able to just make more throws. Wasn't that sound like a dumb question, but when your thumb isn't doing what you want it to do, how do you throw with that? Like how all, yeah, all I know is that uh, I was able to physically still move the ball down the field. Um, I wasn't able to throw it with the exact velocity. Um, I couldn't throw a, a spiral 100% of the time. I wasn't able to throw it 60-plus yards down the field, but I could get it 45, 50 yards. So I just made it work for the last six weeks of the season, and then I went through spring ball, and uh, I was getting treatment on it all day, you know, day and night. And uh, I don't know, I just made it work. And, um, you know, it's phys football is a physical and violent sport. And if you're able to physically participate um, and, and be out there with your team, then a lot of times the coaches will allow you to be out there. So, I don't know, I just made it work. And you're right, I probably compensated and changed some of my, of my mechanics without knowing it. But, I mean, I made it work. And like I said, uh, now that, that I got it all fixed, I, I know, I remember what it feels like to be back to normal. You know, my mind and my body almost forgot because it had been so long without you know it being normal, but it's all fixed now, and I'm excited about where it's at. When did the procedure Yeah, it was in April. Yeah, so um, in the off season, uh, some sometime during our downtime after the spring game, um, and then in the summer, I was already back to I was back to throwing and and doing stuff in the summer, so it wasn't a lot of downtime, and uh, it was very minimal. And um, like I said, uh, it was. It was definitely needed, and I'm glad that I got it done because um, my body probably could have done it without, you know, without the procedure. But 
uh, I just think it was the best decision for me in my career uh, to get it done and also for this team. So. Yeah, um, you know, it's a fine line when you come in as a new guy and you also are the quarterback. And uh, you know, leadership is something that I feel like that uh, you either have in you, or you don't. It's hard to teach someone how to be a leader, and it's hard to teach someone uh, how to speak and and the words to say at the right time. But um, you know, I've 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 been playing football since I was four years old, and uh, I've been playing quarterback since I was uh, a, a young kid. And I just feel like that leadership is uh, kind of an innate quality. But, um, you know, every day I walk in the building, uh, I, I want to get better and I want it to seem to get better. But I always have to ask myself, you know, when do I go? I don't want to step too far over the line, but also I don't want to sit back and do nothing and say and say nothing. So um, I think that the coaches and the, and the team and the players here and really the, uh, the leadership, we have a, a unity council uh, leadership committee on this team. And uh, it's composed of offense and defense. And we have uh, one specialist on there. And I would feel like I would say that those guys have. Uh, helped my transition and my leadership um, really become more comfortable and natural for me. And uh, they de they've done a good job of taking me in and kind of uh, allowing me to lead when I need to lead. And also, I'm able to sit back and listen to Travis Vokalek and Garrett Nelson and, and Turner Corcoran and, uh, and Nick and those guys. And uh, I would say that the leadership that we have um, with the older guys on the team have probably been, uh, those guys have been like my best friends and they've helped me through everything so far. Yeah, like I said, I mean, we're going to have a, a, a lot of adverse uh, moments in the season, but, you know, today was one of those moments, and this isn't, and this is day 12. It, this isn't the first time that uh, Travis and I have had to talk to the offense. This isn't the first time. Even if we're having a great practice, I think it's also important to know that you don't have to, you don't have to uh, have a low point in a practice or a game to talk. So I try to walk around and I try to give guys high fives on the receivers and the offensive line and the running backs and say good job. You know, I would say that um, really having a positive tone and a, a positive approach to even just keeping guys up. If we're doing good, keep going and, and keep staying positive. Or if, we're, if we're doing bad, then trying to pick each other up. And that's the hardest because, you know, everybody's like, okay, you know, we're already getting beat, so we're just going to stay down here. But uh, the coaches challenged us today to pick it up, and, uh, and I was challenging each other as well. But like I said, we have to do better. I mean, it was our first practice in the stadium, full pads, right? I guess it's hot for – People in the, I, last year at this time last year we were having practices at 115 degrees in, in Texas heat. So today wasn't that, that wasn't that hot to me. But I also don't weigh 330 pounds, you know, and I'm not a lineman, so can't speak for everyone. But um, today was a, a little bit, a uh, little bit of adversity, and we have to be able to fight back. Yeah, I, I would say that. Our relationship has continued to grow, and uh, um, it, it feels the exact same, the same Marcus that I knew at Texas. Um, but uh, he's better now. Honestly, uh, he looks uh, he looks quicker and faster than I remember seeing him. So, I guess the strength and conditioning that he was doing uh, down there worked out for him. And uh, we're really good. We're really good friends. Uh, and uh, we were roommates with each other last year. Um, every time we went to the hotel at Texas, we were um, kind of roommate buddies on Friday nights. So we talk a lot, and uh, we're very close. Um, Trey Palmer and Marcus are probably uh, my good friends. But Marcus is doing a great job, and uh, he's really staying positive. He's picked up the offense pretty good. And uh, I don't know, I've tried to do my best to just, um, you know, translate the language. And when he first got here, it was funny because we'd have plays and we'd have stuff that we'd do. I'd give him a signal or a play that, you know, not Nebraska, but I give him like the old Texas play. And I say run it just like this. Or you remember if we see this look on defense, run it exactly how you did last year against Baylor, you know, in whatever quarter. So it's just nice to be able to have that experience and that and that camaraderie with with Marcus. I have a question about just two minute drills. Like what I'm sure you've run some successful ones in your career. Uh, what as a quarterback, what makes you good at a two minute drill? What are you focusing on when you go out there for those compressed plays and seconds? Yeah, two minute drill. Uh, I mean, obviously you have to understand the scenario and the situation. So usually it's less than two minutes and you have to drive the whole field. It's either end of half or it's the end of the game. And you need a touchdown or you need a field goal. And then you also have to ask the, off the offensive coordinator, the head coach, or the uh, special teams coordinator, where's the kick line? So you know as soon as you get over to the other side of the field, kind of um, where the kick line is and where we need to spot the ball. So I just say understand the situation and understanding football is important. Uh, as a quarterback, knowing uh, – 
to not take a sack, uh, knowing to not scramble unless you're going to get positive yards or a first down. And then just knowing the areas of the field that the defense usually gives up during two minute and where they don't give up. A lot of times outside the numbers, they'll give that up. They give up the underneath uh, check downs. Um, we've had two two minute drills uh, so far. I've gone two times. And uh, the first time that we did it, uh, we were not successful. We ran out of time. I think a few weeks ago, we got down. We drove the field for like, you know, uh, from the opposite 30, we drove down to the red zone, ran out of time, uh, tried to hit a pass to Trey Palmer, and we ran out of time on a fourth down. And then we had one uh, just the other day where uh, we needed a, a touchdown at the end of the game. It was a minute and 30 seconds on the clock. We had one timeout, and uh, we needed a touchdown. He drove the ball all the way down inside uh, the red zone, and the defense also uh, stopped us. So, I mean, they're doing a really good job. We just we just ran out of time, and you know, the coaches put us in a lot of adverse situations for our two-minute drill, but I would say being smart with the football, understanding the situation, and just maintaining composure at quarterback is very important. Any more questions? We're good? Thank you, guys.